Now let me show you how to make your own V-trigger to S-trigger cable like this. Uh, you can see we've got a quarter inch connector on this end and our Cinch Jones connector on this end. And if you want to find one of these, it is called the P304CCT connector. You can find them on eBay or any electronic supplier ought to be able to find you one. This is what's going to connect your positive trigger gate outputs into the Moog standard S trigger outputs. And um, basically, this is how the S trigger cable comes apart. We've got a quarter inch cable on this end just because I made this uh, to work with my orb sequencer. Uh, if we want to use it for 512, we can just use a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter like that. Or if you want to use it just with Euro rack or 512 type stuff and you need a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch connector cable. Just start with one of those and you can wire it up just like I've got my quarter inch wired up here. So the um, important thing to note here is you're going to take your uh, Cinch Jones connector apart and you've only got two connectors here. You've got one small blade and one large blade here. The large blade is the ground contact. The small blade is going to be your signal and you need to include a transistor and a 10k resistor into this little jack here and that is what basically inverts the polarity of our V trigger and then so when it goes high the S trigger signal is pulled low which activates the envelopes in the Moog signal or in the in the Moog synthesizer so the way you're going to connect this all up is you've got three connectors or three leads on the transistor here. The transistor I'm using is a 2N 3904 and when you look at a transistor here it's curved on this side the top pin or lead of that transistor is the collector that's going to go to the small lead of our Cinch Jones connector the bottom lead or the emitter of the transistor is going to connect to our ground or our big lug of the Sense Jones and the middle lead of this transistor we're going to wire that up and solder it to a 10k resistor that 10k resistor the other end of it goes to the tip portion right here of our quarter inch connector and the shield or ground connector of our quarter inch is going to go to the junction of the emitter and the large pin so on that large pin we've got the emitter and the ground of this quarter inch cable or eighth inch cable whatever you use the top is just connected to the connect or collector and the middle pin is connected to your 10k resistor which then goes on to the tip of your cable so just wire that up uh, solder it up nicely make sure you don't have any shorts in there and then when you put it all together uh, and you may want to use some heat shrink tube or electrical tape just to kind of isolate those leads so they don't touch when the circuit bends in there but it will all fit inside that connector and then there's a little securing pin here that goes in there let's push that in and you are good to go now this input will go into the S trigger input on your Moog we're using a Model D Mini Moog and it works just great with all of our positive polarity gate signals. Uh, CV input on the Moog uh, appears to be a 1 volt per octave so you can connect that directly um, from the 512 into the Mini Moog. And again, you can use, uh, you can either use quarter inch, because quarter inch inputs are on the Moog, and get yourself a little adapter like this, so you can convert your quarter inch to quarter inch cable to one end being a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch connector. Um, or you can just go buy yourself a one end, or one eighth inch to quarter inch uh, cable. And also with these, if you're too lazy to make your own, I know there are certain companies out there that already make a V trigger to S trigger uh, cable. So do a little Google searching and I'm sure you can find one already pre-made that you can buy yourself. 
but if you're handy with a soldering iron, go ahead and make one yourself. Save you some time and you can do it probably faster than you get one shipped to you. Now let's take a look at the cable we need to make for controlling an EMS synthesizer um, with the 512 or basically anything that produces a positive gate signal. Um, the gate signal is going to come into the synthy through the keyboard input jack and that jack looks like this connector style. That is the Sense Jones P308 CCT. If you want to Google that, you can find one either on eBay or through your electronic supplier. And when you get these, um, here's one that's not assembled here. When you get these, uh, you'll notice when you take it apart, there's little numbers on the inside of the, of the jack where your uh, solder terminals are. And so if we look at this, Although the cable I use to control my EMS, it has two connectors on it. At one time, I had tried to get both CV and gate going into here and never really got the CV working properly. I think that's because it's on a different voltage standard. But I still use the gate signal. And so if we look here, um, these solder pins are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And so the tips portion or the signal of our cable is going to be routed to pin 5 there and next to that on pin 3 that's where our ground is or the shield ground of our quarter inch or eighth inch cable whatever you decide to use that's where that will go and um, pretty simple no additional circuits needed you just want to make sure when you solder that you've uh, don't have any shorts in there or you haven't melted the insulation around your wiring here. So that's pretty simple. So that'll control the gate portion of your EMS synthesizer to get the control voltage in uh, and use the 1 volt per octave standard CVs um, say from the 512 with the EMS. You can go into the high input level channels 1 and 2. You only need to use one of them. For instance, if we plug it into channel 1, uh, then we can use the input level channel 1 control and dial that in uh, to scale that 1 volt per octave CV into approximately the 0.3 volts per octave that the EMS wants to uh, receive. Um, another important thing is when you are routing on your pin matrix uh, with the pins, the control level one going to the oscillators, I would recommend that you're using uh, precision matched uh, resistors in those pins. Uh, for instance, um, I replaced the resistor pins in my EMS with 1% um, metal film resistors, but then I go in and manually match those to like 1 tenth or 1 one hundredth of a percent. Uh, just so that the voltage coming to both oscillators is identical. Now let's look at how you would control a Bukla type synthesizer with the 512. Um, basically what I've done here is I've taken a quarter inch cable. We could also take an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter cable and route it to a banana jack on the other end because uh, as we know Bukla only runs on the banana jack stuff and so uh, the main thing you need to know here is that banana jacks only have one signal on them and that's the signal itself there is no shielding or grounding to the cable so your quarter inch or eighth inch cable that is the tip here is your signal and the sleeve here is your ground or your shield so what I like to do is just take a normal quarter inch to quarter inch cable or eighth inch to eighth inch cable. Uh, if you're using the quarter inch and you want to use it with the 512, you can just get yourself a quarter inch uh, to 3.5 millimeter adapter and use it, use it that way. But what I like to do is take just a standard quarter inch mono audio cable, get one that's about twice the length of the length that you want to route from the 512 to the bookless system 
and then just cut it in half. That way you've now got two cables uh, to work with. And same with the uh, banana jacks. You've got, just take a little short one, cut it in half, or you can cut it down a little bit here, and strip the wires off. Tin them up, and so the signal going to our tip of the banana jack, that is going to go to the tip of our audio cable, whether it's quarter inch or eighth inch. The, the shielding part of the cable, what I like to do is run it the length of this wire so that the signal of this cable is then grounded and shielded, um, but basically it's not going to go anywhere, but at least the cable's then shielded all the way up to this point, uh, which is going to go into the unit. So we'd use this cable, let's say for uh, the volts per octave or aftertouch or gate, it could be whatever, but at some point you need a, another cable that has your audio connector on one end uh, and again it's just a mono signal it's got the tip and your ground on the sleeve and then on the other end we've got two banana cables and so the first one is just going to go um, let's say we, we wire one of them to the tip of this cable the other one we take the ground or the shield part of this audio cable and break that out and then solder it to another banana jack here. And that way, because we need a ground reference to go from the 512 to the bookla so it knows what reference our gates and control voltages are at. So the thing to keep in mind <clears throat> is if you keep these too short, uh, like for instance on my bookla music easel, um, on the left hand side of the unit you've got your CV and gate and after touch inputs but the grounding for the chassis is clear over on the right hand side of the unit by the power supply and power switch so if you make your cable short like this what you can do is then you know since banana jacks are stackable you can get a longer banana jack just stack it so it's long enough to go over to the ground input and plug it in that way or since you haven't made your cable yet you could you know strip this cable all the way up to this point and you'll have much wider Y in the cable so that you can reach both the gate and the ground signal on opposite sides so just remember that you do have to have at least one of these audio cables made connected to ground uh, otherwise, the book won't have the reference that it needs uh, for your CB gate and aftertouch signals. When you're setting the 512 up to control the bookla or the EML devices, uh, both of those units require a 1.2 volt per octave CB standard. The 512 on its own is following the 1 volt per octave standard from the key CB here. So whenever you're controlling the bookla, or the EML uh, devices with the 512. What you need to do is there's a little trim pot right here accessible from the front panel and that is our CV scaling for the key CV output and uh, so from the factory this 512 is going to generate one volt per octave here and I know this little trimmer will get you all the way up to 1.3 volts per octave uh, coming out of the CV, key CV output, so you got plenty of range there to dial in your 1.2 volt per octave uh, CV scaling for the bookla and the EML stuff. Basically what you do is connect up your 8th inch jack, get a little dummy plug on the other end or connect it to your, your test leads of your voltmeter, and uh, then you can just play different octaves of C on the keyboard and adjust. Uh, if you're doing the 1.2, you're going to want approximately 0 volts here. Then when you play the next C up, you're going to want a value of 1.2 volts higher than that. The next C up would be like 2.4 volts, 3.6 volts, 4.8 volts, and so on. So rough it in with just playing an octave and then play greater ranges of octaves. Or another thing you can do that's kind of nice is go into the arpeggiator mode 
with the uh, 512 and you can either play a single note and increase your octave reiterations to plus four that way you're going to be playing five actual octaves automatically and just hold that note so your hands are free to set the tremor and watch your voltmeter while you're doing it uh, the other thing you can do is you can play multiple C notes plus use the octave reiteration so it's kind of playing one two three and then one two three an octave higher and one two three an octave higher uh, it's another great way to tune your PCB output um, very simple to do and if you don't have a voltmeter uh, you can always do it by ear or you could use something like a tuner uh, just connect your tuner up to the audio output or the oscillator output of the synthesizer that you're tuning the CB for and then just watch your, your pitches so that they are in tune whenever you've got the different C notes or whatever note you're playing at that time um, the other thing you need to keep in mind is on analog synthesizers there are two adjustment points basically you've got the CV coming out of the 512 or your sequencer controller whatever you're using so that's got its own scaling to produce either the 1.2 uh, volts per octave or the standard 1 volt per octave but then your analog synthesizers themselves will also have a scaling in them so that they respond properly to the 1 volt or 1.2 volt per octave standard. So there's two adjustments to really set in analog synthesizers. I recommend that you set up whatever's producing your voltage first and then set up your uh, oscillator second. Um, otherwise, if you set, if you adjust just the 512, to let's say one instrument and it's not quite dialed into the one volt or 1.2 volts per octave and then you go to and it's playing that fine and then you go and use the 512 with another synthesizer and that, well now you're going to have to recalibrate this to work with the other synthesizer it's better just to dial this up for what the standard is you're controlling whether it's the one volt per octave or 1.2 volt per octaves and then make sure your other synthesizers are controlled and conform to that standard. All right, well, I think that concludes uh, everything you need to know to make your own cables to control the various different synthesizers. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can write some comments down in the comments section, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. All right, thanks for watching, and enjoy your 512.